Hey, hey, Marcus House with you here, and another very disappointing end to the week with the SN3 Starship, basically just crumpling in the middle here. Obviously, it has been a terrible week for a lot of reasons. But yes, this is really disappointing. I had huge hopes for the SN3 because it looked just so much more robust. The welds here were looking really beautiful. But yes, anyway, the SN4 is already being built, so we can look forward to that. That's uh, that's going to come up rapidly, much quicker than most people would realize. But yes, over here to the SN3, what's actually happened is that the entire liquid oxygen tank has just folded in the middle. So yes, let's break this right down. Okay, Neil, we can see you coming down the ladder now. Now before we jump into this, a huge thank you to Boca Chica Gal with NASA Spaceflight and also Lab Padre. Links to both of those incredibly awesome channels are in the description, so do follow those if you're not already. So earlier in the day, all of the tests seemed to be quite successful, except for the cryogenic test on the liquid oxygen tank. For some reason there were some issues, Elon Musk tweeted later on that some valves leaked at cryogenic temperatures, fixing and will retest soon. So we were assuming at that point that um, the testing was on hold for the day, but then they started testing the liquid methane tank. Another shout out here to Lab Padre, who this week has finalized that new camera setup. Now you can go to check out footage quality right up to 4K, so that is really taking it to the next level. Amazing work there, mate. So yes, everybody was watching this stream, very excited. We all thought that this was going to succeed quite well. It seemed stable. It even got to the point where the pressurization seemed to have already occurred, and it was just sitting there nicely. And then all of a sudden, there seemed to be depressurization of the liquid oxygen tank. That's the one there in the center. Gas bursts out from where the sides are breached and it just falls head first down onto the ground there. Now let's just take a second to listen to the audio with this. What I've actually done is I've brought the audio in line with the video so that there's no audio delay. We can do that just by matching up when the tank hits the ground. So this should be about right. So let's just have a listen at this. So yes, this was quite unlike the other explosions we've had with the Mark 1 and also the serial number 1. This wasn't an explosion or an implosion, anything like what we've seen. This, as far as we can see, is just that central tank losing integrity and pressure and just folding. So yes, very unique and I think it's going to throw a few question marks in the overall design. Perhaps the stainless steel has just had a few more issues than SpaceX and Elon Musk may have ever really imagined. I'm not sure if it's to do with the quality of the welding at this point. Is it simply time to be building these in a clean room like many of the other rockets that SpaceX have already built with the Falcon 9s. I think one thing that we can all agree on is that this style of development is getting a little more controversial as time goes on. Will the SN4 make it to a test flight? Will it be pressurized okay? We don't know. Look, I really hope so. I've got all faith that they can solve these problems, but it is starting to look much more difficult and it's definitely not the few months turnaround that we all thought it might be back when Elon Musk did his presentation back in September last year. And you know, this is something very similar to what we would have seen with something like this old Atlas Agena rocket where pressurization is super important so that this entire vessel can hold itself up. Now, um, this is just like thinking of a punctured tire in a car. As long as your tire pressure is fine, everything is excellent. But as soon as there's a puncture or a small hole in that tire, everything just unravels very quickly. And look, Elon Musk did very quickly afterwards say that we will see what the data review says in the morning. This may have simply been a test configuration mistake. I'm not exactly sure what he means by that. Perhaps there should have been higher pressures in the middle tank. I have got no idea why they would have decided to load up the top tank, but not actually have the bottom liquid oxygen tank pressurized with some sort of liquid as well, because obviously that would add a lot more stability to the entire structure if it was pressurized with liquid on both sides. So so yes, like I say, the SN4 is already under construction, so if this was just a configuration error in the testing, then hopefully we'll see the SN4 Starship up here real soon, ready to be tested in just the same way, and we'll finally get to see that static fire and the first hop test with the three engines and a full-scale Starship. 
Now, just quickly, a huge thank you to my amazing patrons here. You are quite literally turning this dream of mine of creating this content from a hobby into something much more significant. If you like what I do and you would like to join our awesome patrons here, head to patreon.com slash Marcus House. You can interact with me more directly via the included exclusive roles in Discord. You can check out some exclusive patron-only content and can also have your name listed right here like these other incredible people. A massive thank you as well to my quality control squad here for helping me research and proof the material for these videos. If you're interested in these topics and would like to be a part of this, follow me on Twitter and please do get in touch. In the tile in the bottom left today, we have my video last week covering the initial stacking of the SN3, the Starlink flight with the missing booster and Rocket Lab news. In the top right is my latest video and in the bottom right, content that YouTube has selected from my channel just for you. Thank you everyone for watching and we'll see you all in the next video.